uh, some premature uh, uh, shopping mall where we we go and we asking for what we want push a few buttons and we get the response now that is cultural faith and that's the faith that this culture has produced this is the faith that we as a religious body have produced uh, uh, you, 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 you get what you you can get anything from God no now why, wait now you're, you're edging you're, you're, you're on the precipice of a leak now watch your fathers had great faith in God the Bible says that your forefather Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through faith now watch in the etymology of it, it says it this. No unbelief or distrust made Abraham waver to doubtingly question what God was doing in his life. There's a difference in a question to God and then doubting. When you ask God when, no, there's a way to say God when. And then there's God when God when and then God when come on children it said he didn't doubt stagger or waver what God showed him and told him he didn't doubt waver or stagger one iota one 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 sliver in his being in his emotional his mind that God would not do it look at somebody and tell him return to the faith of your father return to it God says a thing and then because it doesn't come at our particular timeline then we want to stagger it says and uh, but your forefather grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God this is Romans chapter number 4 verse 20 which really says he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God in other words praising God for what he knew would happen see that's faith in God when I believe it I start that very moment and begin to praise God for what I know unwaveringly will happen that is true faith not I say God give me something no what has God said concerning my life and that I praise him for because that is what's going to come to pass for me oh come on come on come on the true faith of God but it says he kept praising God verse 21 fully satisfied and assured look at somebody and say faith is fully satisfied and being assured look at them saying fully satisfied if you feel like you have to add something to it or take something from it you're not satisfied being fully satisfied and assured that God was able to do what to mightily keep his word to do what he had promised him there's no way I can do this at 99 years old have the promise and have many children but I'm surely satisfied and fully persuaded I'm gonna praise you right now in it because I know it's already done see we say we have faith in God but we still worry we still become God when no 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 it's God is the day when is it? 
hallelujah for what you said you're going to do surely persuaded surely and fully satisfied you don't have to do nothing else God I can't hardly wait I can't hardly sleep I go to bed and my feet in the bed are just waving at you because I'm so excited I'm sleeping three inches above my bed because my faith has already received it I've already assured that what you said not what I want what you said That is why his faith was credited to him for righteousness. See, that's when we become righteous in our faith. It's because what he said, I believe it. What he says, I receive it. And this is why we get great warriors, heroes, and sheroes, such as uh, Bishop C.H. Mason and, and Bishop Hayward of the Apostolic Faith, and, and uh, Bishop Lawson and Bishop Mildred Board, and uh, Catherine Kuhlman, and uh, uh, S.C. Mitchells, and Mother Coffee, and Mother Dabney's. And, and this is where you get uh, L.C. Shaw from. It's because, not because of what they want, but what he said to them. They surely without doubt believed it and they walked in it. Now we become their children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And here we are in this generation and we are to hold down the church with this salty faith, with this unmovable light. And here we are being easily moved. easily moved we cannot mentally deceive ourselves and stagger when God is looking for us to be strong he said we would move from faith to faith and from glory to glory and do you have to hold fast and, and and refuse to allow anything else to be channeled into your spirit don't pick up all of this stuff that you see around you that has grabbed a hold to this social inferences of what they deem the church should be. No, the church already has its identity and does not need anybody to paint her up any other kind of way. She's a strong church. She's a triumphant church. She's a glorious church. She's a holy church. And I know that we want to give God anything, but it's a holy church. It's a church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing that we prepare ourselves to accomplish and achieve. Sisters and brothers in modern Christendom, you have to realize, you have to realize that favor does not mean the number of dresses and suits and shoes that I have. That is not the true faith and favor of the church. When you hear this doctrine of favor, hit the book. This book, this church has to be dead centered because if we're one iota off, we are way off. A little dirt in the waters still makes the water dirty. Please, our doctrine has to stay pure and holy according to the confines of what our Savior created. He's the head of the church. Favor just means God is with you. Define theology. It is God is with you. Look at somebody saying God's with you. That's favor. Is he with you? Is he living in you? Is he moving in you? Is he breathing in you? How many of you here have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you're not ashamed? God is with you. That is favor. What are you looking for? People putting you on a scanted look for something that is outside of what you already have. You already have favor. Keeping you on an intellectual quest for what? For what? You are already favored. Favored to your forefathers does not mean you have carte blanche free from prison and jail and sickness and pain and trouble. Favor means God is with me in it and he will bring me through it. Preach the 
the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. All these lies said at the end of time we would be lovers of ourselves more than lovers of God. That we would drop away from the faith. How can we walk in a destiny that we do not know? How can we follow a God that we do not recognize? You don't know when he's talking or not. Because this book says, when I'm in favor, I can go through literal demonic hell. 